Hey everybody, welcome back to Pizza Legends. Today we're gonna add a pizza stone to our game. So the pizza stone is gonna be a game object that you walk up to and you can use it exactly once to craft a new pizza for your lineup. We're gonna implement this in a way that can be repeated so that if you have new ideas for features in your games, you can use a really similar pattern and really add whatever you want. Reminder that all the code is linked below as well as a playlist to the whole video series if you've missed anything. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna be working on a new game object today. So let's just dive right in index html i'm going to find uh, some of our other kind of game object scripts here uh, like person maybe and i'm going to duplicate it i'm going to make a new file right next to it called pizza stone let's create this new file in our project so pizza legends up here new file pizza stone.js and you know it's going to be a class uh, but this time we can extend our game object class to get some of that sweet functionality that we have set up already to go. So we'll create our constructor and that's gonna take some configuration. And because we're extending game object here, we need to go ahead and call super, passing in that same config. Now I'm gonna bring in some code here for the appearance of our game object, our pizza stone. Uh, so we're gonna make a new sprite and this is gonna be sort of just baked into this type of class, pizza stone. We're redefining this dot sprite here passing in a reference to this, which the game object needs under the hood, giving it a source file of a different sprite sheet. And this one's cut a little bit differently. You can find it in the code download links uh, for this project, but it's a slightly different layout than the people sprite sheets that we've seen so far. So there are two different frames in that sprite sheet. Both of them are facing downwards. One of them has a ball of dough on it, meaning it's unused. Like you can walk up to the ball of dough and use it to craft a pizza. As soon as you have crafted the pizza though, that dough should disappear and we have that frame captured here. So it's like the same table, but it doesn't have the ball of dough on it. And just for initializing here, we're gonna start the current frame as used down. It doesn't really matter that much and we'll see why in a second because this is constantly gonna be updated to reflect the correct state of what's going on. But for cleanliness, I like to have it start at least as one of these. One thing we should check on real quick in Sprite.js is just make sure that that current frame that's being passed in is being used. I think we left it, yes, we left it like this in a previous video. Uh, so I'm gonna come in and just change this, making sure that Sprite.js has current animation coming from the config and defaulting to idle down. Let's pop over to a map now and actually get this thing on screen. So I'll go to overworld map and I'll find our demo room this is where we've been playing with all the NPCs here. I'm going to make a new one in the game objects object here. Uh, we'll just call it pizza stone. It's going to be a new pizza stone. We can give it an X and a Y. And remember that when we do X and Y, we need to use these little helpers to make sure the grid number is kind of multiplied in there. So we'll say something like four. 10, just kind of guessing here, we'll see where it lands. Firing up the game, you can see the pizza stone is appearing on screen, hurrah. Uh, but let's move it up maybe more towards this area here. So we're gonna decrease that X a little bit and then maybe like seven for the Y. And here we go, this looks pretty good. So with the pizza stone, what we're going for here is that it's gonna be a single use item, like a single use object in the world. So we'll be able to walk up to it talk to it and then if we haven't used it before we should be able to craft a new pizza but if we have used it then it should just say like you've already used this kind of thing and so to know if we've used it or not already what we're going to do is pass in a story flag to the object itself and the pizza stone will use the story flag to determine what it looks like and then maybe what happens when we talk to it so i'm just going to make a new string here called like used pizza stone in the constructor of pizza stone let's go ahead and be ready to accept this And now for getting the appearance right, we can go ahead and extend that update method from game object. And so this is gonna be called every step in the game loop. We're gonna add a check here that's gonna set this current animation value based on whether we have the story flag or not. So we'll say this sprite current animation. We'll look at our bucket of story flags on player state and just see if we have this key. And that key would be this dot story flag, the same one that gets passed up up here, a little ternary here. So if we do have it, we wanna use use down because that means that we've used the pizza stone before. But if we don't have it, then we're gonna do the opposite, which would be unused down. 
Now, when I reload the game, you can see that our pizza stone has that ball of dough on it. It's just showing a different frame in the sprite sheet because we don't have that story point. So that part is working. The idea here is that as soon as we do have that story flag, on the very next game loop frame, this sprite sheet's frame will change and then that ball of dough will be gone. So it's a nice little visual indicator for us. So to actually get that story point, let's go ahead and configure the talking of this game object. There are kind of two ways to approach this that's cool for us to talk about right now. If you remember in Overworld Map, uh, we configure people and we kind of pass what we want them to say in. And that's certainly one way to do it. That makes it really easy to make people feel different from one another, and that's great. Um, another approach, like with the pizza stone, we may have a bunch of these throughout the game, and they're almost always going to do the same thing or close to the exact same thing. And so rather than needing to configure each instance every time, we can actually just bake that configuration into the class itself. It's kind of your call on where the lines are of what should be like passed in and configured. I'm just trying to show you different ways to approach things here. For me personally, the minimalist approach definitely works well. And then if you find you need to customize way more things, that's when you can kind of bring it out to this level. So that said, we can customize talking here. We'll make a new scenario and this will have a list of events on it. It's also gonna have one of these required arrays of story flags that we talked about in the previous video. And so here, if you have this dot story flag, we wanna show a message that's like, you've already used this. So if we have the flag, you'll get this one first and nothing else. Uh, but in the other case where you don't have that flag yet, we're gonna do another kind of series of events so we'll say something epic like approaching the legendary. Scroll down here a bit. And now we're gonna add that flag. So add story flag. The flag is gonna be this dot story flag, which basically, you know, whatever gets passed into the class here, that's what will be used. Now in a little bit, we're gonna add a new event type that actually shows a new type of menu for us to choose the type of pizza we wanna craft. And we'll get there in a second, but for now, let's just see if this setting bit is working. So I walk up to the pizza stone, I talk to it, approaching the legendary pizza stone. Now in the very next event, I should receive the story flag, and I do. The update method of the pizza stone has ran and updated that sprite sheet because now we have the, the flag. And so this is all working right. Now if I talk to it again, You've already used this. Now let's get going on making the actual pizza stone more functional. And so basically right before you get the flag, but after that text message that kind of introduces it, let's add a new event and it's gonna be called crafting menu. And in the crafting menu, we're gonna be able to pass in IDs from the pizza decks of different pizzas that we can craft. So let's open up pizzas, JS, and, and kind of pick some out. Now we're already using a few of these in the game, so it's gonna be a little bit redundant. I highly encourage you to come in here and like make a bunch of your own pizzas. That makes this way more fun. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use what we already have here. So let's say uh, V01 and, and F01. Those are gonna be the ones that you can craft. And now this will be an array on this event, but we wanna actually pass that in uh, from the instance of this pizza stone. So we'll say this.pizzas up here, right where we did story flag, we'll say this dot pizzas is config dot pizzas. Come into overworld map here, pizzas. This way we could have multiple pizza stones like this, uh, but, but ones that offer different options for crafting. We're just gonna leave it at one, but that's kind of why we're passing it in. So let's go to our overworld event handler and we'll collapse the old ones. Let's add a new one called crafting menu. It's going to get a resolver. This is going to work a lot like the pause menu. Uh, if we look at the pause menu real quick, uh, the key difference is that uh, in this case, we don't need to do the stopping of the overworld loop part. And so we're really just going to take kind of this much and change a few things. We'll, we'll get into that in a second. So we'll say menu It's going to be a new crafting menu. It's going to take one of these on complete callbacks. And then it also needs to know which pizza options to offer. And so it's pizzas can be this.event.pizzas. When we're done, we can simply resolve it. 
And as soon as this is created, we can go ahead and say menu.init, passing in a container that we want to inject it into, like we've seen before. So that's going to be our game container. Let's create this crafting menu and add it to the project. filling in a lot of the stuff we always see in these components. We'll create our element here as a div, add the class name to it. Just like you did with the pause menu, we're going to start with an H2 in here and then inject one of those keyboard menus. So we'll come down to init here and bring in our create element call and then a new keyboard menu, passing in the container for where we want that description to be. We can then init the actual keyboard menu and set our first page of options. And now this one's going to be mega simple. It's just going to be one page of options, unlike some of the more complex menus we've seen so far. Uh, but even so, I'm going to kind of put that logic for getting the options into its own method. So I'll put that up here. And then finally, to finish up init here, we can go ahead and inject it into the container. So container append child this dot element. We will bring in our usual closing code for this kind of thing. So we're going to end the keyword menu, remove the DOM element, and then call that on complete callback to finish the overworld event. Here, just to see it working on screen, let's just return kind of a dummy array. So it'll be test description. Let's see how this works. Let's get this on the page. So right with pause menu, same thing, but crafting menu. So testing this out, I'm going to walk up to the pizza stone, approaching the legendary pizza stone. And we get a menu on screen, but again, it's completely unstyled. This is a good opportunity for us to actually reuse a lot of the pause menu styles that we created. We're really going for kind of the same layout, same everything. So let's go ahead and make those styles a little bit more reusable. So we called that menus.css, and it's kind of tethered to the pause menu right now. So I'm going to change this rule to make it more like overlay menu uh, going lowercase here to sort of indicate that it's a reusable class rather than tied to the specific javascript thing and then now we've broken our pause menu styles probably so let's go to pause menu here where we add the pause menu class this, this actually isn't technically doing anything anymore but i still kind of like it in the dom as just a nice signal on like what that component is so just right under that we'll add another rule it's like overlay menu and now we'll come into our crafting menu and do the same thing. So now these styles and menus.css should work in both cases. Now when I load the game, I'll pause and see that the styles still work. Uh, and then I'll come up to this pizza stone. And now we have a little bit of a nicer appearance going on. From here, we can replace these test mock options, this one option, with actual crafting options that came from the config of this pizza stone. So back in the get options method of our crafting menu here, let's go ahead and iterate through each of those pizzas that are coming in and map them to be an option in our menu. So we'll grab the ID. We're going to look up this ID in our pizza decks and get a reference to that whole config. And now we're set up to return a label. That'll be the name of the pizza. A description, we have that to base.description and a handler. So what happens when we choose this option? So this is the first time in the project that we're actually adding something to our player's pizza bucket with code, like on the fly. So we're gonna need to um, create a way to add a pizza to player state. And then once that's done, we can just run the close handler here. Before we tackle this part, let's just go ahead and make sure that our pizza options are flowing through OK. So reloading, coming up to the pizza stone. And we get two options here, Call Me Kale, Portobello Express. So let's take this now and add a new method to player state. So take our player state, and we'll call it like add pizza. And we'll pass in the ID of the type of pizza that we want to add. So we'll go over to player state.js here, kind of where we have the other lineup related stuff. 
Uh, we'll make a, that new method called add pizza. It's going to take in an ID. Let's be a little more clear. Let's call this pizza ID, meaning it's it's an ID in the pizza decks that we are getting in there. So we'll say this.pizza's new ID. And new ID here is actually going to be the key in our bucket of pizzas in player state. Like currently we have P1, P2. That's different than the types of IDs we see in the pizza decks, which is like S001. We're basically going to create a new wild random string that's going to be totally unique and use that as the key in player state. So a good way I like to do that is to uh, start with a string and then we'll throw like our P prefix on there. And then we're just going to inject some stuff. The first thing being the absolute current timestamp. So date.now in milliseconds. This is already going to help us have a pretty unique value because date.now is changing every single millisecond that goes by. And in this game, it's sort of impossible for it to be called more than once in the same millisecond. But even so, we can salt it with a little call to math.random. And so we'll tack on a super random number that could be anywhere between one and, and you know whatever you put here. The idea being that somehow, if this was called at the exact same time twice, we'd get different results probably. And these odds are pretty darn good. It's worth noting that this game right now is completely local. So we're only dealing with IDs that we're creating on the client itself. If your game is hooked up to like a database or something like that, then you may want to lean into the database to help you make unique IDs. For us, this is going to work just fine. When we add a pizza to our list here, we want to make sure that we have all of these stateful values too. So that's the pizza ID, HP, max HP, all of that kind of battle stuff. So we'll bring in that here, starting with like fresh XP zero, level one. Good extra credit for this video would be a way to extend the system to sort of pass in which level you want to start the pizza at. If you're accessing a pizza stone late in the game, you probably don't want to start at level one. Maybe you want to start the pizza closer to where the player will probably be in level. That's going to really depend on your game though. So be sure to customize this for whatever you want. Now that we've added this pizza, if there's room in our lineup, we can go ahead and add this pizza to the lineup too. So we'll say if this.lineup.length is less than three, we'll push in that new ID. We loosely established this as a rule in the game that the max lineup size is three, but really it could be whatever you want. Now that we've modified the lineup and player state in general, let's go ahead and fire off the signal that we created in the previous video lineup change this will cause our hud to update and show our new lineup and just so we can see this working like this new id part like what happened under the hood i'm going to go ahead and console.log our player state class out so just this pop open our console here walk over the pizza stone select which one we want to create i'll pick portobello express our HUD is updated with this new pizza and our console log is firing. Let's just spindle that open and see what we got. So see our lineup started as that static P1 that, that we had. And now we have this wacky ID. That's what our random number created combined with the current date. And this is a reference to our pizza in the pizzas object here. See that's all wired up and worked fine. If I close this, Again, I can't use the pizza stone again. So this feature is up and working great. So we use this pattern here to create a pretty specific component or game object for the crafting, but you could really use this pattern and create any type of game object that you want. Maybe you could create like a cash register that you can walk up to and buy items or buy something, buy new attacks. Maybe you could walk up to a crate that's in the room here and then talk to that and it like adds items to your inventory, that would be really cool. You can achieve all of that with the same game object pattern. Thank you so much for watching this one to the end. As always, if you haven't already, uh, subscribe for the whole series if you're getting value out of this, and I really appreciate it when you hit the like button. Be sure to come join us in Discord. Tell us about your game project, whether it's something you're working on right now or something you're thinking about building in the future. There's a ton of people in there that would love to hear about it. There's also that donation link below if you're interested in supporting this channel directly. Thank you so much to everybody who's done that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode.